A very warm welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are doing a masterclass with the amazing Emmy Faust, who is a digital growth and business growth specialist. For those of you that have been to any of Emmy's masterclasses before, you will know that they are absolutely knowledge-packed, very, very valuable, and you're going to be leaving today with some actionable tasks and tools that you can put in place to structure and set your business on the right path for growth. Emmy, it's a great honor to have you as always. Thank you so much for making the time. I really, really appreciate it. Hey, Michelle. I love doing the women's chapter things. I'm very passionate about helping female founders and I'm really happy to be here today. Um, as I said, we're going to do something a bit different today. I've never done this before live, but I know it's going to work. And I know Michelle's always very keen that the masterclasses that I do and that you know we do at Women's Chapter are really value packed and also giving you something that you can actually do now to make a change to your business so we're going to do something fun we're going to do the growth my ultimate growth audit live and a couple of you might have already done this and that's brilliant if you've done it and you've got your answers that's great and if you haven't done it we're going to all do it together and I'm going to talk through the purpose of the growth audit and you're going to get your own bespoke personalized plan at the end and, and as we go through I'm going to give you help and insight. So if you haven't, if you've answered no to one of those questions, I'm going to tell you about what you can do to go and rectify that now. So very, very quickly, I'm going to do a super quick um, introduction. Um, I've, about shared, I've shared that link in the chat for anyone that didn't get it ahead of the event. Amazing. Um, for the Amazing. audit. Cool. So I'm going to quickly share my screen before we start this. So let me know if you can see this, the um, the Growth Masterclass and your Ultimate Growth Audit with me, Emmy Faust. Um, I'm going to quickly rattle through these because I just want to get on with the good stuff. So I work with ambitious businesses to deliver a results-focused marketing strategy and plan. I actually end up doing a lot more than that, but that's kind of how I go in and help businesses. And my goal for today is for you to take away some personalized actions for growth. So some, some things that you can actually do in your business right now. Um, that is going to make a massive difference. So even if there's like two or three things that come up from today that you can work on, I can I, I can guarantee that is going to make a huge difference because the things that we're going to talk about are the fundamentals that you need in place in order to grow and scale a profitable business. And this today is for founders that want to get it right first time. Um, they want to spend you want to spend your money wisely learn from those who've done it before so I've done this many times before and I can share lots with you um, you know that marketing is an investment and basically the key thing of all of this is that you're ready to take action honestly like you know you can spend days and days doing business plans and strategies and talking things but actually you do need to take action and very quickly why am I here today um, well, I'm a Dragon's Den winner. I'm a serial service-based entrepreneur. So I've set up lots of businesses, marketing, media, digital businesses, which I've sold to bigger independent agencies. And I've worked with numerous founders like you. Um, I'm not going to go through all my testimonials and stuff just very quickly. Um, I worked with a client just before Christmas in less than three months. She managed to raise £300,000 in funding and actually was overfunded. Um, I basically helped her with her strategy and plan. And, and we talked through all the things that we're going to talk about today. And then um, lovely Claire, who set up a network for women in CX within, I think it was three months. Yeah, she went from zero to 50K in revenue. So I definitely know what I'm talking about. I've been doing this for 20 years and I absolutely love sharing what I know um, with people like you. And I also created the Ultimate Growth Order, and that is what we are going to be working on today. So um, is everybody ready for some interactive work? Pop in the chat very quickly um, what your business is, what your business does, because I always like to try and make the content as relevant as I can for everyone else. But I'd love to know in the chat um, what your business is, what you're selling, and I'd love you to also open up the ultimate growth audit. So I'd like you to open up the ultimate growth audit and we're going to work through this together. Um, at the end, you are going to receive your own personalized plan. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, hang on a sec. You're going to get something like this. 
And just to say that most people who do this will, will get a score of around 30%. So most people who are in early stage businesses will get a score of around 30. Um, and, and at the end of this, you're going to understand your score and you're going to understand what you need to do better for your strategy and sales, how you can score higher on your customers, how you can score better in your marketing, your digital marketing and your resourcing. So you will get your own personalized score. You will get a list of all the questions that you answered. Um, and wherever there's a no, that's, that is a clue to you or that's a, an action to you, that's an area to work on. Um, and you'll also get a PDF, a nine page PDF, which will give you some insights in to the areas that you specifically need to work on. So I mean, Amy, that... just to chip in, because I know there were a couple of people that um, did this before the session, just to let you know, this is still going to be super valuable for you because oh, I mean, yeah, exactly. Because all I... of the rationale behind these questions. Yeah. So if you managed to get a head start and you did it before, I mean, it literally, that, that's a three or four minute process answering a few questions. What, the, the whole purpose of today is for me to explain to you why those questions are important, why they're part of the audit and how you can, um, if you answered no, how you can go about taking action. So it's really, really important that if, if you manage to spend five minutes and already do it and you've got your score, that's fantastic. But actually what we're gonna do is go through and I'm gonna let you know how you can improve your score, okay? So how you can increase it from 30 or 40% or whatever it is, because essentially these are the fundamentals of business. And if you can get those right, then you're going to see, you know, significant growth. And I would say if you could just improve three of those things, you will see such big um, improvements. So is everyone up for doing that? Does everyone want to do this, this piece of work where we're actually going to get some action, um, you know, strategic things to do? And you're going to see, um, you're going to see that, that business growth. So have you got, um, and if you don't want to um, do it yourself, I'm going to share it on the screen so you can have a look at me doing it on the screen and we're going to talk through it. Um, let me just move this. Okay. Okay. So this is what you should be seeing, the ultimate growth audit. Um, and it's basically a process that I take my clients through um, when they first start working with me. Um, and it basically allows me to see where they are and what the areas are to focus on. So what I'd like you to do in your own time is only going to take a minute, maybe 90 seconds, is I'd like you to do the first um, five questions, which is all about strategy. So I want you to go through and answer the first five questions. So do you have a clear vision for where you want your business to be in five years time? Yes or no? Um, the next one is, have you completed a SWOT analysis? The next one, and if you don't know what SWOT analysis is, then you haven't completed it. I'm going to talk about why that's important. The next one is, are you clear on your positioning and what differentiates you from your customers? Do you have clear company values that align with your brand and shine through in all you do? And are you following a defined marketing strategy and plan? So if you can just get to those, um, that is the first bit where we're talking about strategy. Okay, and I'm just going to come off and I'm going to quickly talk through that. So the things that are really important is why do you need a clear vision for where you want your business to be in five years? I imagine most of you have thought this through, but, you know, you need to have that vision. You need to know where you're going to get to, because if you don't have that vision, you don't know how to get there. So I really encourage you, if you haven't done that, to put that in place. Um, secondly, with a SWOT analysis, a SWOT analysis is one of my favorite tools. Pop in the chat here if you've done a SWOT analysis. I'd love to know who's done one because um, what, what you can do with a SWOT is you identify your strengths and you identify your weaknesses. Now, those strengths are often things that you would tell investors. They're often things you tell your um, marketing in your marketing messages. Um, and the opportunities, that's opportunities for growth in your business. So if you're joining a little bit late, um, Michelle will share a link with you because we're working live on this um, fantastic thing. So Janine said, I've done one when I first created my plan B. However, I haven't updated it since. Janine, I really encourage you to keep going back to that SWOT and thinking about what are the opportunities in the marketplace? 
It's such a great business tool. So if the one thing that everyone does from today is they go and do their squat analysis, that would honestly be a game changer. And if you don't know how to do that, reach out to me. I've got loads of podcast episodes and resources to explain how. Um, Any, is it fair to say that with everything we've experienced over the last two years, that it's worth everyone revisiting that SWOT analysis because there may well be opportunities that have emerged or changes totally. in terms of trends or what our customers want based on the experience of living through a pandemic yeah I mean the opportunities now is a lot of people can sell to people globally you know mm. um the barriers have been removed for a lot of service-based businesses the barriers have been removed for a lot of um product-based businesses things are totally different um and what I encourage you to do with the swap well if you haven't done the swap please do it it's going to be a game changer and I've got so many free resources. I can send you some brilliant podcast episodes that will literally walk you through how to do that. So if you haven't done that, that should be the big um, outcome or action point of today. Um, the second thing is, are you clear on your positioning? What differentiates you from your competitors? Now that will come out in the swap because you'll see what are your strengths. Um, the really clear thing is to have something you know you, there needs to be some point of differentiation like why are people going to buy from you than your competitors so so make sure you're clear on that positioning so that you know what sets you apart how you stand out why people are going to buy from you rather than someone else because you know we're in a crowded marketplace there's millions of people selling similar products similar services so we need to be able to differentiate ourselves um, and the next question around company values well that's super important because um when you're clear on your company values that can come through in your marketing that will come through in everything you do in your customer journey so um i would really encourage you to have a think about those things and to be honest these 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 first six questions those are critical so if you're not clear on any of those really focus on those first because once you've got clarity on those everything else will be so much easier so make sure you've got your, your vision clear, you're, you're clear on your company values, what it is that you stand for, um, you're clear on what sets you apart, your positioning, and that, you know, you've got a defined marketing strategy and a plan. So marketing strategy is like, who, who are you targeting? What's your positioning, which we've already talked about? And what are your key objectives? What are the things that you need to do using marketing in order to get to your big five-year vision? Um, and if anyone, like, I've got a lot of content on all of this. So if you're answering no to any of these questions, reach out and I can direct you into the right place. So we're going to go back and we're going to do the next little section, which is um, all about your customers. And while you're doing this, so let's do the next five or six questions. So are you clear who you're targeting, who your target audience is, and you've got, you, you're clear on what those customers look like, their demographics and things like that. Have you conducted customer research and surveys? This is so important to better understand your target audience. Honestly, like always be speaking to your customers, doing surveys, speaking to them in person. Um, and this question here is really important if you are wanting to have a sort of scalable business. So if you really want to grow your business, you need to understand what it costs you to get a new customer. And honestly, you would be shocked by the big businesses I've worked with where they don't actually have that data. So if you don't know how much it costs to get a customer in through the door, you don't know how much um, you, you don't know how much money you're, you know, whether you're going to make any money. Because if it costs you £100 to get a customer through the door, but they're only worth £50, that's not a scalable business. Um, and Another question around the customer is, have you thought about that customer journey from start to finish to ensure you're on brand and delivering value at every touch point? Um, I'd love to know in the chat, let's just, um, has anyone here um, done any customer research? Have you spoken to your customers? Are you getting feedback? Are you regularly speaking to them on the phone? or um, doing surveys or looking at your customer data that's coming in, you know, maybe your emails that you're receiving or your testimonials or all that stuff, kind of stuff. It's just full of amazing information. Um, and I think the last question on the customers is, have you got an amazing customer experience where you're getting five-star um, re reviews from the majority of your customers? And I'm gonna talk about why that's important. So 
if you're getting great reviews from your customers, it means they love what you're doing and it means they're more likely to refer you to their friends. And referral marketing or word of mouth marketing is one of the best ways that we can market ourselves. So that's super important, actually. If you're getting great testimonials and you're getting great five-star reviews, it means you're doing it right. And this is actually something um, that you know board directors look at is feedback from existing customers because if they're giving you amazing feedback and they absolutely love you then clearly they're going to refer you to to friends and family and the last question is do you know what your customer lifetime value is do you know what your customer is worth to you over the lifetime that they're with you so does anyone have clarity on what their cost per acquisition is you don't need to tell me what it is but does anyone know what it costs to get a customer in through the door and does anyone know what a customer is worth to them? Has anybody done that piece of work? Because that's a really interesting piece of work. For example, if on average someone spends £3,000 with me, I might be happy to pay £500 in marketing or £300 in marketing to get them through, to get them in through the door. I might, you know, and that's how, how businesses work. They say marketing is an investment. You need to spend money on marketing in order to get customers. And in order to get customers in through the door, you're going to have to invest in marketing. You need to know what your customers are worth. So it's all very quiet in the chat. Are people are people around? Are people alive? <laughs> Do people know what's going on? Um, this bit about customers, looking after your customers, being customer centric. I'd love to know that you are still here, that you haven't disappeared. Um, has anyone got any thoughts on those questions around customers? Has anybody got any action points that they're going to take from those questions? I'd love to know. <laughs> while we give everyone a chance to pop things in the chat i have a question emmy you were talking yeah. about the the customer lifetime value yes. is there a formula for that <clears throat> or because obviously well, we talked about cost per acquisition and i know that might be you know from a digital marketing spend perspective or in your case what you know what you've worked out you need to spend or could spend overall marketing but how do we calculate the lifetime value of a customer um, so, and that's a tricky one because everyone has kind of different ways of doing it because, you know, for some people, their customer might only be four months and for other people, they might have started their business and they don't know like how long they're going to keep their customer or how long it's going to stay. But generally you're looking at like, what's the average spend of a customer over the lifetime that they're with, with you. So as your business gets, um, older and, you know, on average you have a customer and on average they stay for five months or they make five purchases or they make 10 purchases and this is your average purchase amount. You can work that out. Um, if you're a consultant or service-based business, you might say, um, on average, someone spends, you know, a thousand pounds with me and they do um, that over a period of three months. So that's three thousand pounds. So the 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 lifetime value is not always the first purchase. Um, so I know we've got um, Claire here from from Aqua Baby, which does amazing um, children's clothes. So people might come and buy something. Um, once and actually like I'm a prime example I think I bought something once um and then I loved it so much I ended up buying it for all my godchildren and I ended up buying 10 things and then I'm probably going to go and buy a few more things further down the line so the the lifetime value is what I've spent over the whole lifetime um that I'm with that, uh, that I'm that I'm with a customer of Aqua Baby so uh, and obviously they're new so they don't know how long I'm going to stay but so you're, you're trying to work out that average based on the data you know does that make sense yeah yeah absolutely and I suppose one thing then to think about in relation to that is how you can keep those customers engaged so that so that you can extend the lifetime exactly so what value. what exactly so let's just talk a little bit about that so um the lifetime value obviously the higher that is the more profitable your business is and so that's one of the questions why I'm saying like do you know what your customer lifetime value is? Because if you know what that is, you can be looking to increase that. And again, I've got blog posts on this. I've got blog posts about how to increase um, the customer lifetime value. So Stephanie's saying my customers stay with us for eight to 10 years. Um, as the, our linen lasts a very long time, they buy more through that time on an ad, ad hoc basis. So it's tough to calculate. It, it can be tough, um, Stephanie. I think what, what you can do is you can look at how many purchases on average do people making over the period of time they're with you? And, um, and what's the average um, you know, sale price of that? It it's difficult and it's it's a moving figure. And you know, like big 
companies will have people that like do do these calculations um, and are working spending a lot of time to work out what these figures are um but i would just say having a good understanding of approximately what that is is great and then like michelle was saying thinking about how you can increase that so you can increase the customer lifetime value if you have an amazing customer experience obviously people are going to come back you know so you've you've looked at your customer journey and you you um so one of the things, if I talk about that quickly, so one of my clients, we reviewed every single step in the customer journey and they made some improvements. So there's a better customer experience. Now their renewal rate went up 10%. So 10% more people were re renewing. So those people, their customer lifetime value was increasing. And what they were selling was like really quite expensive. It was like 2000 pounds a month subscription. So if you think if those people were renewing, the value of that to them was huge just by changing some things, um, some, just by looking at the customer journey and making some improvements. But that would be an example of how you could improve your customer lifetime value. So you could upsell, you could cross sell, you could reactivate lapsed customers that have forgotten about you. You could, um, you know, there's so many different things you can do. And I've got, again, um, content on that as well. But you're so right, Michelle, that's the reason we ask for that figure is if you've got clarity on that figure, you're often then thinking about how can I improve that and how can I increase that? We also did have some feedback here around customer reviews. Rebecca said she's just implemented Yotpo software for customer reviews. Customer um, reviews is brilliant. And, and a little thing I would say with that, so that's one of the questions I would say, have you got, um, A, it's great to have the five, five star reviews because that's a sign you're doing something good. But the other great thing about reviews is it's social proof to customers and people are anxious to buy. They're anxious to part with their money. So if you've got reviews, you've got testimonials on your site, you've got testimonials if your e-commerce site um, like Claire and um, Rebecca, if you've got testimonials at the point of purchase, those are all things that take away the anxiety from someone buying. And the same with service-based providers. You know, if we've got reviews to show people that we're really good and that we are solving their problem, um, that is really important. So I think we come down, we, we talk about that a bit further down in marketing, but if you haven't got um, Google My Business reviews, you haven't got testimonies, you haven't got case studies and things like that, that again would be something that I'd really look to focus on because it makes a massive difference. It's social proof that your product or service really works. Brilliant, thank you. Cool, okay. So we're gonna go on and do the next five questions. Okay. Um, so we've, all, we've, we've now done um, the strategy and the customers and now we're coming on um, to marketing. So do, have you set quarterly and mar yearly marketing goals? Most businesses I work with haven't, so don't worry if you haven't. Do you have a clear marketing budget? Most businesses I work with haven't, but that's something I help them with. And do you track your marketing and report on at least a monthly basis? If you're a larger business, you should be looking to report on that weekly. Um, and we can talk through some of these things, why it's important to track your marketing, how you might do that um, in a minute. Um, so don't worry if you're answering no, because as I said, most people are getting 30% when they first do this. But I'm going to give you some takeaways and some pointers how you can improve that score to you know, maybe make it 40, 50%. And those improvements can make a massive difference to your bottom line. Are you clear on your marketing funnel? So is everyone here familiar with the marketing funnel? Do you know, um, have you thought about prospects, how you get more prospects, how, how you get more brand awareness? Have you thought about how you get more leads? Have you thought about how you get more customers? And have you thought about how you get more loyal customers? And I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a minute. But a lot of people would not be clear on their marketing funnel um, at this early stage or, you know, not I'm not saying you're all early stage businesses, actually, but I'm saying, you know, relatively small businesses, um, unless you've got like a marketing team, you might not yet have clarity on that. But I would say that's a really important thing to focus on. Um, and then this is a big one that we love, isn't it, Michelle? Strategic partnerships. Um, I know that that's something that we're both very keen on. Strategic partnerships would be people that have access to your audience. So people that you could do collaborations with, people you could do partnerships with, people you could do competitions with. I'd love to know in the chat, has anyone 
got any really strong strategic partnerships? Um, have you done any good collaborations? Have you done anything with strategic partners? So just to be clear, a strategic partner in my eyes is someone that has access to your audience and you can collaborate on things. You Sometimes you might pay them to access their audience. Sometimes you might do a joint webinar. You might, if you're a service-based business, you might go on their podcast. You might go into their Facebook group and offer their audience something. Um, so I'm just trying to think like, for example, if you're a cool sustainable clothing brand, you might do um, strategic partnerships with other sustainable brands that aren't clothing, but lifestyle sustainable brands. Um, you know, and if you're selling amazing perfumes, luxury perfumes, you might find other luxury brands that would have a similar audience, but that aren't competitors with you. Um, so I would love to know if anyone has got any strategic partners. Um, just a little thing there, um, and Janine saying currently finalizing a joint venture with a strategic partner will be opening up a big opportunity stream. This is huge. Like um, Harvard Business Review talk about if you are really serious about business growth and you really want to take things next to the next level, strategic networking is massive because you're, those people already trust your strategic partner or your the joint venture or whoever it is. They're already customers of theirs or they already have trust with them. And if they then recommend you, that customer is much more likely to buy. Does that make sense? Does everyone, does it make sense about the strategic partners? Yeah. And can I chip in with um, with something there as well, Amy? Is that yeah. like, I think this is something I see a lot of is um, where people create partnerships or um, for the sake of doing them. And actually, you need to be very strategic about who you align with. Um, they need to be aligned with your brand values, but also to bring you it's got to be about mutual benefits. And some advice I would have around that is to you know draw up sort of a little table of deliverables for each each of the partners in the collaboration to make sure that you are really providing value to one another because it also makes you makes you makes you both more accountable um to yeah. the partnership and how you are delivering and helping each other because i think often smaller brands fall into the trap of trying to create collaborations and partnerships and then they do all the work yeah you're so right i think that's really important there's a, a couple of people talking about strategic partnerships gins talking about um, a health and well-being idea of specific personal trainers exactly so i think um like michelle said she hit the nail on the head it needs to work for both parties doesn't it so it could be that you're both accessing each other's audience or it could be like today um i'm delivering value to women's chapter and um, but I'm also able to speak to you. you know that's a strategic partnership. Or it could be that you know you work with a similar brand and you both do a joint um, competition, or you promote them in your newsletter and you say, "Wow, I, I love this new amazing jewelry brand I've just found." And then they also give you a shout out in their newsletter. So um, there's ways that you can do it for free. Again, I've got like loads of information on that. If anyone wants me to send them some slides or point them i think i've got a podcast i've done on it as well um strategic partnerships are great because often they don't cost you very much money and whoever you're partnering with their customers already know like and trust them and therefore it's kind of an easy sell like if, if someone's saying i love this business they're amazing you're like oh, okay well i trust that person so so it could be that um so let me just think i've been who have i been work i've been working with some clients recently um and i uh, they one of them actually I've been helping a cancer charity and they are physios that give free physio to cancer patients and they couldn't think how they could get in front of these cancer patients and I said well you know there must be loads of Facebook groups for cancer patients and their families and their carers and things like that so you know a strategic partner for them would be whoever runs that Facebook group where there's loads of people who have been suffering from cancer and they could go in and say look we give we've got free physio we've got free physio for cancer patients so so think about where your audience is hanging out what groups might they be in what um networks might they be part of what other brands are they buying what charities do they support and the more information that you can have about your ideal customer and where they hang out the easier it will be to find strategic partners 
and don't be scared as well to contact those strategic partners honestly people you know I just reach out on LinkedIn or reach out on um, Instagram and just say I think there's an opportunity for us to do something here together you know we've both got access to the same audience I love what you're doing our brands align would you be up for having a chat nine times out of ten people are, are up for it yeah so um, that's something, again, I'd love you to have a think if you haven't already got your strategic partnership sorted, that would definitely be a takeout from today. Um, and the last little bit on customers, um, and, sorry, marketing, is um, this bit about are you creating regular case studies or customer success stories um, or, you know, if you've got a product, you know, customer love, you know, love, whatever you want to call it. And are you getting frequent testimonials and reviews from your customers? Um, Michelle and I were talking earlier, weren't we, about how that is so important um, to get that information um, from your customers. So if we just do that last question and we will have a little bit of a chat about that and then we can come back and do the last part of the audit. Um, and then if anyone's got any questions about their particular score or a question that they, something that they want help with, I can, I'm happy to stay here till whenever answering questions. I'm really cool. So you, you can get free consultancy from me um, today. Mm -hmm. So let's just quickly talk about that little bit that we were talking a bit around the marketing. Um, so Michelle, strategic partnerships, we talked about that. Did that all make sense? Did, does everyone, under, has everyone, is, who who here is going to go away and really focus on strategic partnerships and finding some brands or some people or some companies that they could do something with? Claire is amazing. Yeah. Claire, I mean, you've got, and I'm sure everyone would love to partner with you. You've got the most amazing products. I absolutely love what you're doing. Um, and Parole saying, yes, brilliant. So I would say strategic partnerships because who you partner with, their customers already trust them. Um, and then I think the other thing that we talked about, which was kind of important, was um, the tracking your marketing. That is important. Um, again, you know, I've got loads of resources on how you track that. Um, yeah, Lydia is saying already researching other British brands. Lydia, do you know about great British brands? So Country and Townhouse is one of my mm -hmm. clients and they publish a big um, a big publication called Great, great British Brands. Um, so that might be, you got it, you got it, brilliant. Um, so that might be something for you. And then I think the other thing is, is don't underestimate the importance of those case studies or those customer stories or sharing testimonials on your Instagram stories. So you can have a little highlight for testimonials, um, sharing customer success stories, sharing love and, you know, just getting that out there. And also Google My Business reviews are great for SEO as well. Yeah, as Emily's saying, she does have a few, but she's always looking for more that align with your values. Spot on. That's just a really good point there. Okay, so um, let's just do the last last little bit, which is about the digital marketing. Obviously, in this day and age, um, sorry, there's, there's two little bits. There's the digital marketing and there's a bit about the freelancers. I think in this day and age, digital marketing is key. Um, so let's go through the quiz and... As I said, I'm here at the end to answer any questions. If anyone wants some advice or anything, I'm happy to do that. So are you confident you've got the right digital marketing plans in place? I, I, I mean, a lot of people don't have this. Um, so, but just tick yes or no. And do you have a content strategy? So are you clear on how to use content to get customers to know, like, and trust your brand, you or your brand? Because, you know, in order for someone to buy from you, they need to know, like, and trust you. Um, and that takes time, doesn't it? There's multiple touch points in the buyer's journey. People generally don't just see your product or service and be like, right, I'm signing up and buying today. They might not be quite at the right stage to buy. They might not, um, you know, say, say, for example, you're selling amazing jewelry gifts. I just saw my friend today and she's got an amazing jewelry business and we were talking about it, saw her this morning. Only 5% of people are actually, 3% of people are ready to buy. So how do you keep connected with those people so that you're top of mind when they want a gift when they want to buy something for their friend when they want to buy something for a christening for their godchild godchildren or when they want their husband or partner to get them something so you need to have some content that you're putting out there on social media maybe blogs maybe newsletters so have you thought through what that is what your content strategy is 
And similarly, do you have a social media strategy and plan? And it doesn't need to be really complicated. None of these things need to be complicated because, you know, we're all running relatively small businesses um, and you probably don't have people doing it for you. But just to have a plan about the kind of content that you're going to post, which channels you're going to be on, um, what your content themes might be and, and how you're going to post on these channels, um, I'd love to know. And then I'm, I don't know if you've done this, but have you conducted an audit across your digital channels to understand what is and what isn't working? So have you actually looked at what results you're getting from your newsletter, what results you're getting from your social media, what results you're getting from your digital, if you're using paid ads? Is anyone here using paid ads? I'd love to know if anyone's using paid ads. No, um, we can talk a bit more about that in a minute. But I think this is really just to make sure that you're clear on what is working and what isn't working because lots of people don't realize that they're spending time and energy on things that aren't actually driving results yeah so it's just about having a little having a little quick audit and saying where are my customers coming from always speaking to your customers and finding out where they come from so um so Alessia is saying she uses paid ads cool I'll probably talk about more about that um, are you tracking your digital marketing effectively? Um, and, you know, these are questions also for, 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 for bigger businesses who I work with. So th this might not be, you know, if it's just you and you're selling your services and you, you only need three clients a year, this might not be relevant to you. But, you know, if you're selling products and stuff like that, um, it's good to have Google Analytics installed and it's good to track your digital marketing effectively. It's really important because you can then see where your money is coming from. And the next question is whether you have got the right mix of media. So um, Emily's saying we use Pinterest and a little bit on Insta, Facebook. Um, yeah, Pinterest would be great for you, Emily. Um, so do you have the right digital media mix? So it's good to have some paid media. It's good to have some earned media. So earned media would be things like reviews or PR, media that you've earned that you haven't had to pay for. And owned media is things like your website, your own social media channels, your email newsletter. So as you grow your business, it's good to have a selection of each of those. Paid media helps you scale, earned media where you're getting social reviews and PR, that builds trust and owned media is important because you own it and no one can take it away from you. You don't have to pay for it. So as you're growing your business, it's important to think that you've got a mix of those things. Um, so let's just, I'm just really quickly going to run and get a tissue. I've got my nose, um, I need to blow my nose. But Michelle, can I just leave that with you um, while I do that? Absolutely. <laughs> um, everyone, this might be a good opportunity that if you have any questions, pop them in the chat because we, um, we've still got some time left, but it will be good to know if you've got burning questions around anything we've been through so far. Um, or anything related to the strategy or potential growth of your business, pop them in, pop those questions in the chat, and then we'll um, try and get through those after Emmy's um, finished talking about the different elements of the audit. Yeah, and I think, you know, some of you might be listening to this and thinking, oh, I'm way too small a business, this isn't relevant to me. Mm. Um, the thing is, is, I do, I do understand that. And, you know, I'm a small business. I, I've only got limited supply and limited availability. So, yes, I don't need to do all these things to, like, the max. But I still do have a bit of a content strategy. I still do have a bit of a social media strategy. I still am tracking in my head where things are coming from. I have got Google Analytics installed. But to be honest, you know, I don't have a huge amount of traffic coming to my website. Most of my work comes from strategic partners. But I think if you even just thinking through these questions and you might say oh that one's not relevant to me but a lot of these are relevant to smaller businesses and if you can start out right you can get the fundamentals right like if you've got case studies it just makes everything so much easier so much easier to win business if you've got reviews it's so much easier to win business um so this is really like the fundamentals and you, you could just think I'm just going to focus on one of these things each week or one of these things each month and even by the end of the year if you do one a month and you've managed to do 12 of these things, you will be miles away, miles ahead of any of your competitors, if, you know, if they're also small businesses, because yeah. they just won't be doing these things. And, and I know because I have people coming to me all the time and they do this quiz and they get, you know, 30%. So 
Um, if anyone's got any questions on anything that's come up so far, do let me know. Um, the last view is kind of quick, is really about whether you've got the right resources um, internally. And obviously there's people here running big businesses, there's people here that are just solopreneurs. So if you're a solopreneur, you probably are the marketing team. Um, and if you've got a big business, then it's really important that you've got a marketing team that actually are capable of implementing that, um, of implementing your plans. And I think another thing that people struggle with is finding the right um, freelancers and agencies. Sorry, I was gonna share my screen. Um, <clears throat> so do you feel like you've got the right, does anyone here use an agency or freelancers? Um, do you feel happy and confident with them? Do you feel like they're spending your money effectively? Do you feel like they are fit for purpose? I know that one of the big problems that people have as they're growing their business is finding those um, right agencies. Um, uh, and Stephanie, so Stephanie, are you using a paid ads agency or are you doing that yourself? Um, just pop that in the chat, pop that in the chat. So it's good to know if, I think one of the things in order to grow your business is you do need to have the right team. So that's the right team of freelancers, the right agencies or the right people internally. Um, Alessia is saying she's in the process of trying to hire a freelancer. Okay, pop in the chat what you're looking for, Alessia, I might be able to help you. Um, and again, this is maybe for slightly bigger businesses, but are you confident that they're delivering a consistent and return, satisfactory return on investment? Um, Stephanie's saying she used an agency, got very disappointed. Um, that's the thing. Sometimes, the, these are the questions I'm asking. Sometimes agencies are charging a lot in agency fees, okay? So do you worry you might be paying too much? If it's not relevant, just click no. Um, and then the last question is, what sort of business are you? So are you a solopreneur, an established business, a startup, or you've got funding? Um, and do you have a marketing budget of more than 100K a year? This is just so that I can send you relevant information. And what are you selling? Something else. You will then see that you have the opportunity to get your PDF report sent to you. So you just pop your name and your email in and you'll get your PDF report. And that is going to look something like this. So you'll get your personalized report. Um, <clears throat> it will tell you where your strengths are. It's also gonna give you key areas of improvement. It will tell you what to do. Um, and it will also give you a list of all your questions. And then, as I said, I would encourage you to go through those and anything that you've got a no for, that could be an action point. So maybe you do one a week, maybe you do one a month. Um, you can go to my website, you can listen to my podcast, all the answers to these questions I've created content for. So honestly, like everything is there and there's loads of free stuff there. So, so Michelle, did that all make sense? Was that a useful exercise to do? Yeah, absolutely. And Stephanie's just saying she just did the questionnaire, uh, saw the results, not sure it's coming to me in an email. It, it takes a few minutes to come through. What should we start? So Natasha's saying, where should we start with creating a marketing or social media strategy? Okay, so Natasha, the thing with um, that, I suppose they're two, two different things. So your marketing strategy is who are you going to be marketing to? Because we've all got limited time, money and energy. So we can't market to everyone. So you've got to think about if you could split your market into different segments, which is the... Um, Janine, I've seen yours. I've seen yours. Look in your, look in your um, promo or look in your, it might have gone into your junk. If it has that, I, I can't do anything about that. But um, but have a look in your junk because Janine, I've seen your, um, I've seen your score. I saw it come through at 12 o'clock. So if you haven't got it, it could be that your email, um, CR, your, you know, your email, whatever it is, is super, um, I don't know, aggressive and you put me into your spam, your promotions or something. And um, it went in your junk, Janine. Okay, sorry. So just coming back to Janine's question, Natasha's question, creating a marketing strategy. We haven't got enough time, energy, budget to, vote, to market to everyone. Okay, so who are those people that you're going to target? Who is that segment? What's that segment of people that you can help that is the most profitable, enjoyable, easy for you to sell to? That's the first part of your marketing strategy. The next bit is what is your positioning? So we talked a bit about that earlier. How are you different from your other competitors? What is it that sets you apart? What, what are your values? What, what is it that people are going to be like, oh, well, I want to buy from Natasha because 
you know, whatever it is that is important about what you sell. So that's important, the positioning. And then the next bit of the marketing strategy is looking at what are your overall objectives and what you need to do to get there. And <clears throat> what I'm talking about here is what do you need to do to, to um, when it comes to brand awareness? So that's the top of the funnel. What do you need to do to get more leads or the next stage of the funnel where people have shown, where people are showing an interest? So maybe they've signed up to your newsletter. Maybe they're following you on social media. Maybe they've done a quiz or an audit or whatever it might be. They turn up to a webinar. And then how do you, what's your strategy to get more customers? And what's your strategy to get you increase your customer lifetime value from your existing customers so does that make sense there's almost like four chunks so you've got how can I increase brand awareness people have never heard of me at the top once they've heard of me how can I get them to take an action to put their hand up to say I might buy from you in the future so that could be following you on social watching your videos coming to a webinar coming to a masterclass booking a discovery call um having a free sample of your product um signing up to your newsletter signing up to get a discount code how can you, what strategy, what's the strategy to, to get more customers, get more customers converting? Um, and then the last one is how do you keep those customers, loyal customers, engaged customers? How do you reactivate lapsed customers? That's all the last, um, the last part of the funnel, which is, you know, making more money from your existing customers with the customer lifetime value. So does that make sense, Natasha? You've got those four stages of the customer journey. And then at each stage, you're going to look at what tactical things, what things are you going to do to increase brand awareness? What things are you going to do to get more leads? So if I just give you an example, or what things are you going to do to increase the customer lifetime value? So we talked about that, didn't we? You might be doing referral programs. You might be doing upsell, cross-sell. You might um, improve your customer journey. You, there's lots of different tactical things that you can do at each stage. So that's the marketing. And then with the social media, you're sort of asking yourself the same questions like, who am I targeting? What do I stand for on social media? Once you know who you're targeting, what platforms would those customers be on? Because, you know, again, if we've got limited time and energy, we're not going to be on every single platform unless we're a big brand. Um, and then, you know, what do you stand for? What are those, what are your customers interested in? What content are they interested in? And how can you what can you do at each stage of the funnel on social media to get more brand awareness, to build relationships and nurture relationships with your potential customers, to get more customers and to keep those customers loyal so they keep coming back. Does that make sense? Hopefully that helps other people as well. Did that make sense, Natasha? Yeah, it did. Thank you. Okay. What are you, what are you selling? Uh, I work in wealth management, so financial services. Okay. Cool. So you're selling to customers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably going to be selling on LinkedIn, I'd imagine, because you're talking, you know, it's you're selling financial services. I mean, I've worked with a couple of, of, of clients like you and yeah, it's there's a lot of relationship building. There's a lot of probably direct outreach potentially or um on LinkedIn or posting relevant content, doing webinars, doing masterclasses, all that kind of thing um, would be relevant for you. But I think really thinking like, who's your audience? Who are these people that you're trying to help when it comes to wealth management? Are you trying to help female entrepreneurs? Are you, you know, I've, well, I've spoken to two people, one of them who's focusing on working with female entrepreneurs, another one who's focused on helping high, um, you know, super athletes who are like obviously got, you know, in a lot of income and don't know what to do with it so it's almost like if you've got your little niche your little segment and you're not trying to say I help everyone I can do anything for everyone much easier to create content and help them and convert them so hopefully that makes sense brilliant um, thank you anyone else got any questions um so Stephanie said she used an agency she was disappointed the results with a freelancer being brilliant well that's fantastic um that's fantastic Stephanie good to know so I'd love to know, does anybody have any other questions um, about your specific business? Um, feel free to ask. Have you had anything that hasn't worked or has worked? Um, have you been losing money somewhere um, and you don't know why? Or um, 
feel free to ask me some questions because obviously you've got 23 people here so <laughs> people must be waiting for some piece of information and if there's anything that you want to know some more info on or Michelle if there's anything that you wanted to um, ask about more please do mm. let me know is there any topic that anyone's struggling with is there anything that any of those questions that you've got a no for and you want to know how you could improve it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I think going through that process of the audit was really useful to sort of pull out all of the, the yeah, I mean, a checklist really of things that we should be considering um, in terms of, of what makes up an overall strategy for growth. But I think one of, I just wanted to add from a cost perspective, I think one of the costs that business owners often do not factor in to their marketing spend is the cost of their own time. Mm, exactly. Um, it's so so often you will ask somebody, well, how much did it cost you to acquire that customer? They were like, well, I didn't, I did, you know, I didn't pay anything to get them. But actually, how much time did you spend um, working a channel that wasn't producing anything for you? So, for example, um, Instagram. You know, there's some businesses that Instagram is not suitable for. Of you, if you know, if you're a product based business, and if you do service marketing really well, then Instagram can work for you but you've got to put in that time to really engage your audience, but you have to be realistic with yourself around how much that's actually costing you because so often, and I don't know if this is something that, that women are more prone to is that we don't value our time. Yeah, I um, totally agree. So, so actually you're thinking, you know, if you're going and posting, so for me, um, I'd say most of my audience aren't on Instagram for my one-to-one -one clients. Um, they are probably more likely to be on LinkedIn. Um, and I, I'm actually on LinkedIn partly because I love it because I love it because I'm a solopreneur and I, and I like that network. Um, but actually, if I look at where I'm getting all my clients from, it's from strategic partners, it's from referrals, it's from people that already know me or, or know someone who knows me who's basically recommending me. And I'm at a point that I can't scale that big because it's just me. So I'm happy with that. But when you get to the point, say you're selling products, you know, you are going to need to use paid ads um, because that allows you to scale and get access to a lot more people. And also just a point on sort of Instagram and, and social media, only a fraction of your audience see your posts. Um, I remember talking to a Pilates studio and they were saying they, they were paying someone. and I think it was costing 200 quid a week to do their organic social media. So it's like 800 quid a month. And I was like, that's a huge amount of money. Because only your existing 200 followers or 300 followers are really seeing that. Yes, you know, a couple of people follow hashtags or whatever. I said, what you should do, reformer Pilates, is go to the local school where there's loads of children and there's loads of mums who want to do Pilates and you either do something with the, you know, the PTA or you stand outside and flyer. I was like, for £800, that is a huge amount of money. And those posts are only being seen by a fraction of your 200 followers. So in that situation, they'd have done better to do paid ads and to have taken their existing customer database, uploaded it to Facebook, found lookalike audiences, done some targeting, um, rather than paying someone to create these beautiful images on social media, which no one was going to see. Yeah. It's and I think a real that, problem. that came up in our most recent mastermind, actually, as well, um, was that, you know, with the iOS changes, the algorithms and the way that Facebook and Instagram are working now has has affected a lot of brands, um, their focus and what they've been doing and how they are converting across those channels. So it's always you know worth staying up to speed with the changes across those platforms. And remember too that they are businesses and they are kind of steering everyone that uses those platforms um in certain directions and we need to be aware of those in order to maximize on them mm. so we've, we've got here yeah, um watch the social dilemma the social dilemma is amazing i don't know if you've seen it but it talks about the background what's really going on in these social networks and you know of course they don't want you marketing your product and putting a link on there and you know you're sending people off linkedin to go to your website because linkedin want to keep everyone within linkedin and facebook want to keep everyone in facebook because that's how they make money from ads so you know if you're constantly posting stuff and there's a link to like go off and do something that just won't get any any um touch mm -hmm. so we could quickly go through these so rebecca's going to do the swap amazing um, rebecca i think you'll get loads of value from that make sure when you're doing your sort of opportunities and threats you look at like what are the trends in, um, you know, the favorites market for 2022? What are the trends in consumer 
purchasing in you know 2022 and you can find so much amazing in information on through google um and you know think about what channels could you be using i think pinterest probably great for you um as well rebecca um maybe tiktok i don't know you have to have a little think and see how that all works but i definitely think doing the swap is great and i encourage you to do that every six months and you know what i even did a swap for myself as a as a sort of freelance consultant like what am I good at what do I like doing where are my strengths what do I struggle with what do I not like doing it's very clear actually like well you should just do more of that that's your area of genius um so for Natasha who was asking earlier and you're a wealth manager you know maybe focus on your areas of maybe find your niche amongst something that you love which you're very passionate about um so joy is saying um yeah whiz is great on consumer trends joy is saying that instagram doesn't convert at all i think there's a lot of stylists aren't there probably on instagram there's a lot of competition so how do you stand out um i think yeah linkedin is 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 a great platform i love linkedin i'm kind of probably biased because i've got 7,000 engaged followers where on instagram i probably only got a thousand and i just feel like i've part of that community more um it does take a bit of time joy but i suggest i just encourage you to to get on there and start building relationships but with any network you know it's the same with women's chapter it's the same with any network you kind of get out what you put in like people say oh networking doesn't work it's like yeah, but it doesn't work if you just turn up to a meeting and expect to get loads of business or whatever off the back of it it works when you give and you're you know and it's the same on linkedin probably you know it's the same on linkedin is a, is a social network and i think um, on that joy i would also advise speaking to your existing clients and asking them are they on linkedin because they will that will give you an indication um if your profile of client is using i suspect they probably are um but it's worth actually talking to your existing client base and finding out you know what are what platforms are they on what do they use where do they go and spend their time um and that will give you an idea of whether or not that's worth the time to spend i think uh, lydia also had a question yeah, i was going to answer so lydia there's two things there's promoting your own brand isn't there because obviously people need to have awareness that your brand exists and brand equity is key and people you want people to come to you rather than those individual um individual retailers individual products that you're selling so why would someone come to you um where you're curating everything why would they come to you as the go-to destination rather than going direct to buy the brand directly so so i think there is a piece of work to be done around your brand and building your brand and brand awareness of your own brand and educating people why you what sets you apart your positioning um if you're talking about how do you individually sell each of those um you know individual brands on your website um yeah that's you know a piece of work there's probably quite a lot of paid ads in there but also amazing opportunities for content because you can be like pulling out themes or pulling out areas and saying these are our top three whatever and we love them because of this you can be telling the story of, about you know not only why you set your business up but why you chose particular brands to feature you know essentially your curated marketplace you're the go-to destination I would go to you because I know that I can trust that what you're selling um, is going to fulfill my needs so I work with um, a client called Welding Sisters who's an amazing um, brand and they are basically the go-to destination for toxin-free um, beauty health and beauty um, products and so why would I go to them rather than buying the brands direct I just know that, that they've done all the hard work. I know that they have curated the best things in one place and I trust them and I can just go and buy their products and I know they're going to be really good and I know that they're going to be toxin-free and I don't have to worry about reading all the labels and all those sort of things. So think about why would people come to you rather than going um, directly? Um, more difficult to draw customers to our site rather than other beauty retailers. Building awareness, exactly. That's the thing, Lydia. So it's a slow process, isn't it, of building awareness and being clear on your positioning and what sets you apart and why people would come to you is it that you've just got you know 20 years of experience of that industry and you've hand-picked all the favorites and you know you know if someone comes to your website they know like whatever they're buying they can you know they can trust you and they're, they're building a relationship with you and your brand um and joy is saying yes my clients on linkedin great well start posting i think that's the thing joy is just you know get out there and post and also comment on other people's posts, like other people's posts, 
um, it's not just about putting stuff out there. It's also about connecting with other people and, and engaging on their on their content. Brilliant. Well, Michelle, you probably need to go, don't you? It's one o'clock. Yeah, well, I, I think we are. We have reached the end. And I think since we don't have any more questions, it's probably a natural point for us to, to call it a day. But of course, please do engage with Emmy. Um, reach out to her. Emmy, do you want to chat, pop your email address in here? Yep, I'll put my email address in here. Um, e Emmy at emmyfiles.com. Um, it was lovely to see all you ladies. I hope you found it really uh, informative. If you do feel overwhelmed, um, if you do feel overwhelmed by it, um, I really encourage you to go back to your output, to that document, and to look at the stuff that you've already got nailed and to say anything that I haven't quite got sorted, um, I'm going to work on that and maybe pick one thing a month and go to my website or look at my podcast. There is, I can pretty much guarantee I've created a podcast episode on every single one of these, um, or I've got some content on my site. So if you're struggling to find it, um, I can put, my podcast is called The Growth Podcast with Emmy Faust. You can find that in Spotify. Um, you could just listen to that from the very beginning um, when I was terrible at podcasting and very scared to hear my own voice. Um, I think that was about two years ago but yeah there's so much insight on there so thank you everyone for coming it's like lovely um, I hope it worked doing this like live thing I've never done it before um, and Janine saying not to take away thank you Pearl saying thank you thank you Rebecca thank you Alessia thank you everyone for your feedback um, and Rebecca thank you because you're saying it worked well so maybe it's something I'll do again um, in the future um, Michelle thank you for having me no, thank you so much for, I mean, and, and it's been said several times here in the, the comments, just the, the generosity and how much you've shared with us today. I um, love it. I love very, to have very, people. Very, very yeah. And, you know, I can vouch for all of Emmy's resources. They're fantastic. So, you know, you do not need to search the net for answers to a lot of these questions. Just go to all the takeaways that she's created. Um, and if you get your growth audit, um, which you should do, it'll be in your inbox and you are feeling... Uh, as Emmy said, overwhelmed, um, reach out to either one of us and um, and we can try and point you in the direction. Maybe it's even just working out what your three mission critical uh, tasks should be and what you should be looking at. But I think if you, if you come out with one thing from today that you know you need to go away and implement, um, then that's a step in the right direction and be kind to yourself. Exactly, that's the thing. Don't try and do it all. One thing, two things strategic partners do your SWOT do your case studies one of those things is going to be a game changer honestly like I've seen or looking at your customer journey I've seen clients just do one thing and see huge results in the bottom line Michelle you need to go I know you do so thank you so much it's been amazing <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much thank you Emmy and thank you everyone for joining us Get thanks everybody thank you so much bye lovely to see you all